like mine. It was good. But it was just sort of like very, very, uh, very good talent show. We appreciate uh, the guys that came up and uh, participated. So it was a lot of fun. We wanted, again, for you guys to leave here having an experience that it was the best possible camp experience all around. What we're going to leave you with here is, is uh, the last message is perhaps uh, the most powerful message for you guys to leave with. Uh, there's a lot of principles that we will teach here during the course of the week, and this one, for sure, uh, will change your life, if you allow it. Here at the University of Louisville, we feel very, very strongly about um, the principle of goal setting, of setting a direction in your life, a purpose for what you do, a destiny to, to head to. What we know, without a doubt, is for you to move from where you are right now, we have to have some idea of where we want to go. So we have to set the direction, we have to set some destiny. There's got to be something for us to shoot for, something for us to move for. We, we tell our guys, it's kind of like this, if you, if you jump in a boat in a really active river, and you push away from that, the shore, and you look around and there's no paddles, or oars, or rudder, your journey is completely at the mercy of the river. And when that happens, all right, ultimately you find yourself somewhere looking around saying, how did I ever get here? And this is no place I want to be. Right. What we know is that most people spend more time planning their vacations than they do the destination of their lives. Which is pretty sad, but it's true. All right. So for us, what we do for our team at the beginning of the season, most important part of the season, quite honestly, is when we sit down as a group and we decide where we want to go and what we want that to look like. It is absolutely the most important part of the season that we set a direction. And we do it not only as a team, but we do it for them individually as well. That they individually have an idea of where they want to go and what they want to do. And once we set that direction, once we have an idea, we now put it down on a piece of paper. We put it down somewhere where they can see it every single day, not only as a team, but individually in their own lives. There's a great, great power in not only thinking about where you want to go, having an idea, but putting it down on a piece of paper. There's two things that happen when you do that. One is you become accountable to it. You can say, yeah, I want to do something. I want to make a certain team. I want to play for the national team. I want to play in the MLS. I want to play for the University of Louisville. I want to make my high school team. It's another to put it down on a piece of paper because once you do, you become accountable to it. The second thing is, is when you put it down on a piece of paper and you keep it in front of you on a regular basis, you have the power now to program your mind. You have the power now to program your mind to see that, to expect it, to anticipate it. They did a study in Harvard back in the 1940s. And in this study, Harvard's a pretty good school, graduating class, only 3% of the graduating class knew what they wanted to do so clearly that they could write it down. Over 40% stated what they wanted to do, but never wrote it down. Over 50% had no idea at that point. Years later, they conclude the study and they find out that the 3% achieved more than the rest of the class all put together. All put together. Powerful. To put down on a piece of paper, it will program your mind. There's no question about it. There was a there was a young boy your age, uh, maybe maybe a little bit younger. All right. There was a story told about him by this man who invited these dinner guests <coughs> over to his house one night, and the dinner guests gathered around after dinner. And he said, I, "I brought you here to tell you a story." You see, there was a boy, young boy, whose father was an itinerant horse trainer. And because of his life, it was disruptive because the dad was always moving from place to place, farm to farm, training different horses. For this young boy, he struggled because of that. Different friends, different places, especially in school. If you could imagine different teachers, different curriculum, different friends wherever he went. His grades were pretty poor until one day he got an assignment from his English teacher. 
And as Simon, he knew he was going to do well. The assignment was, in great detail, write out what your life is going to look like. 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. The boy was so excited, he took the whole week in great detail, wrote out the assignment, handed it in on Friday, was so excited about it. So excited about it. All weekend long, he was thinking about getting the paper back on Monday, he gets back in school, he's in class, he's excited, and they're distributing the papers, he gets his paper back, and on the top of his paper is a big red F. And the teacher writes on it, see me after class. The boy was devastated, he's crushed. This was his one chance for a good grade. So he walks up to the teacher after, after class, he says, teacher, I don't understand, was it was it my grammar? I, I, I tried to correct it. And did I do the assignment right? I tried to do exactly what you wanted. And the teacher said, well, you see, the, the issue is I, I know you. I, I know you and I know your father. I know you guys live in a trailer park right now. I know you don't even own a car. I know you don't have much money. And you're writing about living on a 100-acre ranch in a 4,000-square-foot home with all these horses. That's not realistic. But I'll tell you what, if you want, if you really want to get a good grade, I'll let you take that paper home. And you can come back and hand it back to me and I'll, re I'll reconsider your grade. The boy went home and that night he thought about it all night. Stood up most of the night actually thinking about it. The next morning came into class, handed the teacher the paper. The teacher looked at the paper and he looked at it, looked it over, he said, What's this? This is the paper I gave you. It's my red F. There's no changes on it. And the boy said, teacher, I thought about it all night. And I thought about it hard. And what I decided is, you can keep your F. And I'm going to keep my dream. And the man said, I tell you that story as you sit in my 4,000 square foot home. On my 100 acre ranch. Surrounded by all my horses. And that paper I wrote is framed over my fireplace if you want to see it. You see, there's great power, great power, in writing your dreams down and putting them in front of you on a regular basis. What it does is it programs your mind to expect certain things, to look for certain things, to anticipate certain things in your life to happen. It's kind of like this, if your friend bought a brand new red car, he calls you up on the phone and says, I bought a brand new red car, meet you on the corner of 3rd and Main in 10 minutes, and hangs up the phone. But before you can ever find out what kind of car it is, man, you're excited and you're going out to the corner of 3rd and Main. You want to see this brand new car, so you're on the corner and you're standing there and there goes a red car. Not his though. Another one goes by and it's not his. And you're watching and you keep watching. Ten minutes go by, he pulls up in his brand new red Mustang convertible, and he opens the door. You're excited to jump in, and the first question he asks you is, how many blue cars came by? And you say, I don't know. I wasn't looking for the blue cars. I can, I can tell you how many red cars were coming by. I counted them all. Every single one, I saw them all. Didn't even see a blue car. When you wake up in the morning, when you start your day, what is it you're looking for? What is it that you're anticipating? You have the ability to program your mind to anticipate and expect whatever you want. But you have to put it there first. You have to program your mind. You have to put it, put it deep into your subconscious over and over again. That's the power of writing down your goals. There are a couple of players here at the University of Louisville that bought into it. These guys know one of the most recent guys. His name was Austin Berry, now plays for the Fire, Chicago Fire. He bought into it at a young age. In fact, these guys used to give him a hard time because you know what? His goals were right here. The toilet was right here. And he put it right there so he knew he was going to see it at least twice a day. These guys gave him a hard time about where he put it. <laughs> but let me tell you about Austin Berry. He was the first round draft pick in the MLS. Scored a goal in the final four college cup, the NCAA tournament. He had those things written down. 
In fact, I'd love to see Austin. He's drafted, he's up there, he's in preseason camp in Chicago. Part of my responsibility for these guys is to actually stretch their dream, is to help them see themselves bigger than they are. So I'm going up to see Austin, and you know what I'm doing? I'm thinking, i got to stretch his dreams a little bit. So I'm having lunch with him, and I'm saying, Austin, how's it going? What's going on? Did you settle yet? Did you find a place? And we have some talk, and we talk about how he's doing. And then I finally get to him, and I say, Austin, you know what? you got to start thinking about playing for our national team. you got to start thinking about being a guy. We need a guy like you to be a center back for our national team. And he pulls out his phone. And he says, Ken, I got it right here. Had it written down already. Had it written down already. I know he's going to play for our national team. I, I know it's going to happen. And it's not just because he has it written down. He's seen it all the time. He's focused on it. He's driven. One of the best players, one of the best rookies in the league right now. He's going to play for our national team. And another player, Aaron Clapton. Aaron Clapton was a guy that came from St. Francis, played there for two years, came here simply because his coach from St. Francis became our assistant coach. He was from New Zealand, never played on a youth national team there. Never played on a youth. He was close a couple times, but never played on a youth national team. Comes here, and he in two years ends up being a ball big youth player. Gets to the MLS combine, nobody drafts him. Nobody drafts him. MLS. He's expecting to play pro. In fact, you know what he wrote down? He wrote down on his goal list that in two years he was going to represent New Zealand in South Africa in the World Cup. And nobody drafted him in the MLS. So he goes home, he knows what his, his goals are. So he goes home and he's looking for a place to play. He's looking for somewhere to play. So he ends up having to go to to, to Australia to find a team. He finds a team, plays there for a few years, or for a year, and comes back to New Zealand, the only place that would have him. He gets on a team in New Zealand, highest level, playing for the coach who's coaching their national team. He does so well there, so well for that club team, the coach gives him an opportunity, brings him into a national team game. He does fairly well, but he's still not close enough to make the team. Two guys get hurt in the last month. Guess who went to South Africa with New Zealand? Aaron Clapton did. He sent me a jersey, signed it, and said, Ken, thanks for all your help in getting The power of writing it down. There are a lot of people that look at him when he put down he's going to play for the national team in South Africa, represent him in a World Cup. He did it. He did it. I'm telling you, it happens in my life all the time, and I see it happen in so many other people's lives. So what we're going to do now is this. Is we're going to give you, you got that? We're going to give you an opportunity now to start the process. What's going to happen is, here, the, the staff is going to distribute two things, a card and a pen. What I want you to do is just grab it and hold it right now, and I'll explain what we're going to go through. All right. You're going to have an opportunity, listen, you're going to have an opportunity on the card to write down, listen to me, write down five things. Five things. There's two sides of the card. The first side you want is things I must achieve in my life. Things I will achieve. <coughs> Five things. Now listen, great detail is better. I want to get good grades? No. I want a 3.5 GPA. I want to play in high school? No, I want to start in high school. I want to travel? No, I want to go to South Africa, New Zealand, Australia. Be specific with it. And I will tell you this, think big. Not safe, think big. Think big. Do not copy from the guy next to you because his dreams are not yours. Right? You don't need to discuss it as well. Think inside of you. 
get a pen with it. Five things, five things that I must, five things I must achieve, five things. Sometimes we check some of them off and we got to reset. Things happen in our life. We write a book, check it off, we're going to do another one. Reach a certain place, you get to a certain mountain. All right, when you hit the mountaintop, what you're looking is for another mountaintop. So this is something that should be done on a regular basis. If you're struggling with it, what it says is that you have not done this enough. This should be so clear in your mind, so clear in your mind, that you should be able to recite it. If you left here right now, look at me real quick, if you left here right now and started heading back to Unitas and somebody stopped you in the middle and said, where are you going, what would you say? Unitas. If two steps later somebody said, where are you going in your life, would you answer them so quickly? You should. If they said, where are you going in your life, you should answer them just as quickly because you should know exactly where you're headed. There shouldn't be a doubt, a stutter, a moment. It should roll off your tongue because you see it every day. You know exactly where you're going and what your purpose is. Otherwise, you're in the boat without any rudder or, or path. If you have a choice to program your mind, why not program it to where you want to go? Why not decide the direction? this and I'll talk to you about this in a second now. Take just a minute, just a minute because we need to get through this. Before we get to the other side, how many, if you wrote, wrote down one or five, how many believe 
that when you leave here, when you go out those doors or you finish camp, how many believe that you could do something that would prevent you or at least make it more difficult for you to reach these goals? You could do something that could probably make it hard to reach those goals. How many think that could, purposely or not purposely, how many think so? Now, how many also say when you leave here that you could do something that would help reach those goals? Okay. So what you're saying is this, and listen to me cl very closely here. If you've answered yes to both of those, what you're saying is this, is that you, you have the power. You have the power. You didn't answer it and say, Coach, you have the power, or my parents have the power, or my teachers have the power, or my friend. You said, I have the power. I decide when I leave here, it is my decision that if I get there, it's because of what I've done. If I don't get there, it's because of what I've done. That's wonderful. It is empowering. It's liberating to know that the power lies within you. How wonderful is that? Scary for some, but empowering for sure. So now you flip the card over, and now you get to write down five actions, five things that you will do that will help you. Now listen, again, very specific because look, I want to make the national team, well I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna play more. No, that's not good enough. I'm gonna spend 30 minutes with the ball three times a week. Every day. Put down what you want. It's your dream. It's your dream. I want a 3.5 GPA. Well look, I'm gonna study an extra 30 minutes a day. It's your dream. You decide. I want to travel the world. Well, you've got to figure out how you're going to create the money to do it. I want to be a millionaire by the time. Well, what are you going to do? Who are you going to associate with? What books are you going to read? What actions are you going to take? The power lies within you. Your dream, your life, your responsibility, your action. Be specific. What are you willing to do? What sacrifices are you willing to make? What effort are you willing to put in? We talked about time. How are you going to use your time? This card is going to be a tool. This card is going to be a tool that you'll be able to use. Now listen, this card is only as powerful as this. And if you're right, you're right. If not, have your eyes up here. Your card is only as powerful as this. If you use it, it's got a ton of power. If you take this thing and you throw it in the trash or in some drawer somewhere and never see it again, it's got no power. No benefit. Write it down once, it helps, but I gotta tell you, it really loses its significance. You need to put this somewhere where you're gonna see it at least twice a day. Here are the times where it's really good to see it. When you wake up in the morning, because when you see it first thing and you read your goals, it will set your day. When you start making your decisions during the day, your decisions should line up with where you wanna go. If your decisions don't line up with where you wanna go, those aren't your goals. Those aren't your goals, or you're not willing to make the sacrifice to do it. It may not mean enough. The second time is right before you go to bed. Why? Because what we know is your mind still works while you're sleeping. It doesn't rest. What does your subconscious mind do? It marinates on whatever you heard, read, or saw last. So if you have a choice, and you know that to be true, 
Why not have it marinate on things like your goals of where you want to go and what you want to do? Why not? Rather than maybe a scary movie, the news, or some really bad music. Why not? Why not being something like your goals? And look, if I told you this, that for just a second you're thinking this might be true. Just for a second, what coach is saying might have a possibility of working. Why not try? Why not put it up somewhere on your dashboard of your car or on your headboard or in your bathroom or look where you're sitting on a toilet you see it twice a day. Why not? I'll tell you what happens. Is every year, right around the end of the fall, beginning of the new year, I get emails from campers. And I store those emails because what they do is they tell me, they say, Coach, it's unbelievable that I did that. I took the card, I put it someplace, and here's what I accomplished. This is what I did. Every year it happens because you know what? There's usually only about 5% of you that will go home and do it. 5% is usually normal. Those are the guys I get those emails from. Those are the guys that have the success story. Your choice. If you want to be one of the 5%, it's up to you. We have the information. You are empowered now. The question is what will you do with it?